Well, well, well. Welcome all back to the dark forest. I hope you brought extra batteries for that flashlight of yours, and some snacks, because it's going to be a long night. Tonight, I'm bringing you 33 killer dogman encounter stories tonight. Sit back and relax, keep close to the fire to keep warm, and let's get spooky. They call me Gambezi. I live in Chattown, Tennessee. If you don't know where that is, look it up on a map. I'm a barber, see, and I was working one late night. I want to say it was around 7 p.m., about the time we usually close up at the shop. The sun had long set and it was pitch black outside. I was just wrapping things up on a bald fade I was doing on my cousin. Chat Town is a city, but it's still country if that makes any sense. There's a lot of rural areas out here and plenty of trees, woods, you name it. Wildlife is common out here. So there we were, just me and my cousin. Everybody else had already packed up and left for the night. It was a Friday night, if I recall correctly. It was cold out that night. After my cousin had paid me, and I gave him some shit because he's a lousy tipper, I locked everything up and made my way to my car. I actually like the park across the street into the woodline area by the park. I don't like parking next to the building just because I would rather save those spots for customers. So, I'm walking towards the parking lot, which is at the park area where the wood line is to the woods. I don't know how deep those woods go. I never really ventured off into the woods, but there's woods everywhere. Hell, it's Tennessee. And yes, I'm a California transplant. I'm not originally from Tennessee. I came over here a few years ago because I'm a Christian and I believe in being able to fly the American flag without offending people. That's just one of many reasons why I moved out east. Anyways, back to the story. As I was starting to approach my car, I heard this ruffling sound in the woods right in front of me. Literally, I want to say at least maybe about 20 yards in front of me. I saw movement in the brush. I stopped with my keys in my hand. I kept my keys in between my fingers, just like Wolverine to give a better example, just in case if it was someone trying to rob me or something. I mean, it was already laid out as I mentioned before. You just never know, or it could have been some homeless people, druggies, who knows. Yes, I was frightened, but still tried to keep calm. I was pretty close to my car, but I wasn't there yet. I just stared into the wood line in front of me, the tall grass swaying from the heavy wind coming from the west. Then suddenly feeling a slight chill tingled on the back of my spine when I heard it. It was the growling of something. There was no way I could truly identify it because I couldn't truly see it. I've had my fair shares of run-ins with the wildlife out here, but nothing sounded like this before. And that's when I saw its eyes. Its glowing amber eyes staring directly at me, right across from me to my left in the wood line. Whatever it was, was just as black as the night, or I would have seen some kind of color. But its eyes, those evil looking eyes I swear to you I've never seen anything like it before even on movies there is something very demonic looking about those eyes it felt like at least a minute but realistically it was probably only about 10 seconds of a stare down I kept jingling my keys frantically trying to figure out which one was correct for my old ass car I eventually got it open and I hopped inside. Once I turned the ignition on, I turned on my high beams quickly. It beamed right at this thing, just quick enough for me to get a glimpse at it before it darted off into the darkness. It was bigger than I thought. 
It was pitch black as I assumed it would be, but it... It looked like a big dog. But it was standing like... like a man. And its eyes... Its eyes were glowing. God help us. This happened to me when I was a kid. I can barely remember all the details, but I do recall a lot of what happened that night. My name is Josh. I'm 25 years old. But when this happened, I was barely eight. To this day, nobody believes me. Other than my friend Bill, he believed me. I grew up in rural Pennsylvania. Needless to say, my backyard was quite a few acres. In other words, there were some serious woods that were still considered our property. My dad built this treehouse for me, and to this day it still stands. Yet I'm not quite sure, as it's been a few years since I've returned home to visit. And for good reason. This happened to me on Halloween night. I know, cliche, right? But it really did happen on Halloween. Me and Bill and a couple other of our friends in the neighborhood finished up trick-or-treating. I didn't want to return home, so everybody just followed me through the shortcut to the treehouse. I mean, it was kind of all of ours in a way, but it just happened to be on my property. And plus, my dad built it, so it was mine. It was kind of like a club for us. I don't think we ever did come up with a name. We didn't really return to that treehouse after that night. We were all hanging out, eating candy, and just, you know, just telling jokes and doing what kids do. It was probably about 10 p.m. when eventually everybody started to leave the head back home. I stayed up there because that was my property. I wasn't really too concerned about rushing home. They pretty much knew where I was. They could pretty much see the light from the treehouse from the back porch. But what they didn't see is what's concerning. I was wrapping things up with my candy, what was left over at least, and I was hanging over the side, just looking at the grass as I swore I heard something. I was shining my flashlight down below. And that's when I saw it. This thing darted across right by me in the bushes. I don't know what it was. It was so fast, it, it was like a blink of an eye. Whoa. I took a few steps back and leaned my back against the back of the tree in the center of the treehouse. What the hell was that? I slowly started to approach the edge again. But right before I leaned over to look out once more, that's when I felt it. I had to grip my hands on the edges so tightly before falling and losing my balance. Whatever that thing was, had came back. It sounded like it thrusted itself against the tree or, or hit it real hard, trying to knock me out of the treehouse or knock the whole treehouse down for that matter. Whatever that thing was, was incredibly strong. I barely had the balls to even look over the edge to see what the hell it was. When I finally did, I didn't see anything down below. I was too scared to make a sound. I just stood there petrified, shaking in my sneakers. Eventually, I got the guts to head downstairs. As I climbed down the wooden platform, I stopped in my tracks out of fright. That's when I saw the huge slash mark in the bark of the tree ripping off one of the steps from my treehouse. The slashes took a huge chunk out of the bark. That and the slashes themselves were at least three inches deep. I have no idea what it was. But that's when I heard the howls.
I currently live in a small town called Alpine in Alaska. It's in the northern part of the state. You probably won't even find it on a map unless you zoom in with your phone. I've been out here for the past 12 years. I brought my family out here after the first couple of years working over at the oil refinery, better known as the EOR, the Enhanced Oil Recovery. Unfortunately for me, there is absolutely nothing to see or do in Alpine, Alaska. It's just huge open flatlands. It's still beautiful in its own way, but to me, eh, it's not really my thing. But hey, the money's right, so I moved there. And the winters. God, that's a story in itself. Let's just say the winters are a negative 20 on a regular day. And that's if it's not snowing. But like I said, the money's good. Real good. Now, back to the story about last summer. My family, I, and a co-worker friend of mine, we decided to go camping, but the nearest woods were a pretty far distance away. So we all packed up in my SUV, and we set sail on the road. It was around a 30-minute drive, give or take. I kinda baby my SUV. And plus, we had a small camper in the back attached, so... How fast did you expect me to go? Anyways... We eventually made it to Lost Alaskan RV Park, which is a place that we like to go to. One of the only places we can go to, at least. Anyways. We arrived in the afternoon. Due to the crazy time zone that we have with sunrise and sunset, even if the sun ever sets at all, it's different out here in Alaska. So we weren't really worried about getting there bright and early, because it's bright and early most of the day anyways. I think it was about 3 p.m. when we finally arrived at the RV park. We unloaded our things, pitched open the tents, grabbed the coolers, placed everything where they needed to be placed, and got going for a little grillage. It was time for a little early dinner before we got on a hike before we decided to have some real drinks and real meat, if you know what I mean. Yes, I'm the man behind the grill. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? So we cracked open some husky IPAs, downed a few, ate some ribs that I put on the grill. Like I said, it's an early dinner snack, there's more to come. And we just talked and shoot the shit a little bit, you know. That's what we do when you go camping, you just get away for a while. Obviously, we didn't have the greatest phone reception, so luckily my son actually had to actually intertwine with us and enjoy himself. Or at least, pretend to enjoy himself, that was. He had just turned 13, so he's going through that early tween phase with this I'm too cool for my parents attitude. So I just let him be quiet, just sit in the corner and shut up. You see, that's how I think, but that's not how I do. Come on now, do you really want me to sleep on the couch? I don't think so. So, I just be on my best behavior, tell some ghost stories while I drink some brews with my buddy and my wife, and I periodically just try to get him involved. Somehow. Little turd. So now, it's around 7.30 and the sun is still beaming with plenty of life. Yeah, right. Anywhere else, it would have been pitch black. But not here. Not in Alpine. No, no, no. So we still had a few hours to expel before we had some type of twilight. So I proposed that we go on a nice hike. And to my surprise, they obliged. So... Fast forward a couple of hours. This hike was beautiful. The pine trees, the grass, the open fields, the hills. I mean, everything about this hike was just stunning. But you know what, to be honest? That's about everywhere you go in Alaska. That's one of the true beauties about Alaska. Its breathtaking scenery is absolutely amazing. The bad thing about it is the whole night and day shift changes that people basically are not used to in the states. That and the winters. The winters here are absolutely brutal. But if you could get through that, it's a great place to be. We are known for our bears and wolves. But in this part of Alaska where we're currently at, we don't really come across too many bears. But definitely some wolves. Big ones. So, what happened that night was something I thought was something normal that turned into something horrific. 
we were currently walking back towards camp. The sun had already set. It was about midnight, and it was dark. Finally. I swear, sometimes you just get sick of the sunlight. Anyways, as we were heading back, we started hearing things moving around in the bushes around us. The crazy thing was, is that it was coming from both directions, to the left and to the right of us. It was almost like there was two of them, whatever they were. At first, we thought maybe it was just some rodents or some small animals. I mean, not everything is big out here in Alaska. There's all types of wildlife out here. But when we started hearing the grunts and the groans and the growls... We knew we were dealing with something else. My son finally got with the program and grabbed my arm. He motioned to me that we need to run. My wife was already starting the speed walk as well as my friend. We started to pick up the pace at this point. We weren't running per se, just walking very fastly. I had a 38 on me, just in case. I mean, we're out here in the woods. It only makes sense. Plus, most people carry out here anyways. For some odd reason, I had the chilling feeling that we were being watched. That, and that this thing may have been following us for a lot longer than we let on to. Now I'm kind of giving myself a facepalm as to why I don't have a pit bull with me right now. Dogs sense things that humans don't. They hear things that we don't. And basically, sometimes they could see things that are not of this world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say that I watch too many movies if you want to, but it's true. Whether you believe me or not, if we had a downright loyal family pit bull with us, this situation probably wouldn't have even occurred. Now, only a couple of us had flashlights. Half the time, we were waving them around as we heard things in the woods. Branches snapping twigs being snapped. I mean, you name it. That and the grunts. Oh god. Those grunty noises were horrifying. At some point, something was thrown right at us and it barely missed my head. It collapsed on the ground and bounced a couple times in the dirt in front of us. We all stopped in shock and examined what it was. It was a huge tree stump. This thing was at least 12 inches wide and about 40 inches long. It was big. I mean, I probably could have picked it up, but still, to be thrown like that from God knows where? No, no, no. This was no prank. This was something else. In the back of my mind, I was thinking it was a Bigfoot. You know, because there have been sightings about Bigfoots out here. And two, they're kind of known for throwing shit. But I was wrong. How was I wrong? Because soon, right after that thing was thrown at me, I heard its howls. And it sounded too close for comfort. The crazy thing was... Those howls didn't sound like any type of coyote I've ever had interactions with, nor any wolves or wild dogs. This was something of pure evil. The tone of it was too deep. The bass, just everything about it was off. I told my family to run, and we booked it as fast as we could back down the dirt trail back to my SUV. As we ran, we could hear this thing grunting and growling in the background. It was definitely chasing us, and it wasn't too far behind. Maybe it was toying with us. I don't know, and I don't give a shit. Luckily, I had my keys on me. We left everything behind except for my SUV. We got in, strapped up, and we got the hell out of there ASAP. We came back in the morning, grabbed the rest of our things very cautiously, but we never went there to camp again.
This happened last summer. I was visiting my buddy in Tennessee, and we decided to go camping for the last weekend that I was in town. I was out there on leave for two weeks from the Navy. We got up bright and early on Friday. You see, he took the day off of work because it was my last weekend there. Anyways, we had everything packed up and we had reached the destination where the state park was located at. Man, it was a hot day, but it was a beautiful day. Not a cloud in the sky, but the temperature was well in the 90s. My buddy Caesar is really not up for hiking. He'd rather just smoke a black and mild and drink. So I didn't argue there. Even though I do like the hike, I decided maybe since it's my last weekend, we'll just kick back and relax and enjoy ourselves. So that's what we did. For the next few hours, we just munched on some chips, barbecued some snacks, as we were going to save the main course for the evening when the sun went down. By that time, I had finished marinating the meat, had a few brews, had a couple shots of Patron, and we were getting the charcoal ready for the fire pit. It was going to be a delicious one. We had some baby back ribs that had been marinating for two days in the fridge with some sweet baby Ray's barbecue sauce. It was going to be fantastic. So, fast forward that evening. We had finished eating these fabulous baby back ribs, tossed a few more beers down, talked about some old times in the military, and that's when it happened. It suddenly got a hell of a lot chillier than it was earlier. I mean, I know at nighttime it's destined to get cold, right? But this was abnormally cold. And the mist. The mist surrounded our whole area. It almost seemed like it was targeting this very area that we were in. I don't remember it being this thick before. We suddenly started hearing these cracking noises in the distance. I'm not sure what direction it even came from. It seemed like it was just echoing around us. That's when I heard the growls. The groaning. Hell, I don't know what it was. Neither did my friend, and he's native to this area. He told me he never heard that before. All jokes aside, we just sat there around the fire pit quiet. I swear... It's like somebody pressed the mute button on the remote control in the whole forest around us. I couldn't even hear a cricket chirp. The wind suddenly stopped. And it was dead silence. I could suddenly feel a cold tingle going down the back of my spine when I... saw those eyes. They were a little bit away, but definitely close. They were peeking in the darkness, some ways back behind my friend's head in the distance. They were glowing red, and they weren't terribly too far from the ground level, so whatever it was, was either floating, or it was standing up on its back hind legs like a man. Maybe it was a man. I couldn't tell in the darkness. But men don't have glowing eyes, and there is no way that these eyes were the reflection like a cat in the moonlight. They were glowing red, bloodshot red. I saw it as clear as day. I started mumbling and shaking and trying to grab my friend and tell him to turn around, but I just couldn't make any sense. I was so petrified. Eventually, my friend figured out what the hell was wrong with me, and he turned around. He saw them too. That's when we heard it growl. What the hell is that? Yeah, I don't know. Is it a bear? That didn't sound like a bear. Is it a wolf? Ah, I've never heard one before. It looks too big to be one. I don't know what... To, what do we do? Do we start barking or do we throw something at it? Maybe it'll piss it off. Maybe we should just be still. My friend didn't reply, he just stared at it, stunned. Honestly, I think we should just go. You mean, leave camp? I mean, maybe it's just a bear. Maybe we just scare it off. No, that's not a bear. This is something else. 
I could feel it. There's something wrong here. Something very, very terribly wrong. Just grab your wallet. I'm gonna grab my keys and my phone. We're gonna get the hell out of here. We could pick this shit up in the morning. I didn't argue with him. My gut told me that he was right, even though I really didn't want to leave. But whatever that was in the distance didn't want us there. We slowly and as quietly as possible got back to his truck, and we left there as quickly as possible. We did return the next morning. Some of our stuff was there. Most of it was scattered into pieces and shredded up everywhere. Our tent was completely destroyed. Whatever it was, took and ate what it wanted and destroyed everything else that we had brought. Thank God we didn't stay there that night. This happened to me the last time that I went camping in southeast San Diego by Mount Laguna. There's quite a few different national parks out there and some state parks as well. It's quite beautiful, outside of the burnt areas from all the forest fires from the past. It really is just nice to get away, you know? Anyways, it was going to be a two-day thing for me. Usually, I have some friends to go with, but this time, I just made a trip for myself. Why not? Everybody else was busy, and I figured I got the time off, so whatever. So I planned it all out. Had my ice chest, gathered all the essentials, all the food, beverages, everything. I already had all the equipment, you know, from previous times camping, so I was ready to rock. I reserved everything about three months in advance, so I already had a spot waiting for me upon arrival. The weather was perfect, as it usually is out here in Southern California, and by God, you pay for it too. I set up my tent. The ice chest was on top of the edge of the picnic table. The wood was already prepped at the fire pit. All the areas had their own fire pits already set up. It's just part of the state park, which is nice. I was just enjoying the last bit of sunlight before it got dark. I was just chillaxing on a lawn chair reading this book that I had just started called Closed for the Season by Mary Downing Hahn. It's about this spooky, haunted, magical force that's evil. I don't know anything else because I didn't finish the book. And now that I look back on it, that probably wasn't the best choice of a book to read being out all alone camping by myself. But I figured, hell, I'm at a state park, there's other people here, so I'm perfectly fine, right? Wrong. Fast forward after my dinner. I was just laying in my tent, tossing and turning, I swear, for some weird reason, I just could not go to sleep that night. I checked my phone. It was already past midnight. It's not like I had anywhere to go. I was going to stay out there for a couple of nights anyways, but still... I wanted to at least try to sleep in a little bit and then take a nice little hike in the morning after breakfast on the fire pit. But that's when I felt something. At first, I thought it might have been a mini earthquake. We're fond of getting those out here. But then I felt it again. Then again. And then again. Then it stopped. But the last time that I felt it, it definitely seemed like it was stronger. Or closer. That's when I heard the noises. I don't know what I heard. It scared the bejeebies out of me. I didn't make a peep. I was incredibly terrified at this point. Whatever it was, was obviously very big to be vibrating the ground like that. I just sat there in my sleeping bag, unable to move. That's when I reached for my flashlight, and then I reached for my gun. Yes, I have a gun, and for good reason too, for situations just like this. Of course, nothing has ever happened before, and I've camped plenty of times growing up. This was odd. I had a very bad feeling about this, and there was something tingling down my spine. I know what it was. It was pure fright. 
I tried to sit up as quietly as possible, but you know how sleeping bags can be. That's when it happened. This thing slashed my tent, revealing three slash marks down the side of my tent. That's when I saw whatever this thing was, peering in through the ripped fabric slashes. Its eyes were looking directly at me, and they were glowing profusely. They were like a dark maroonish color. I can't really explain it any more than that. I could hear it growling somewhat. Almost like a dog, but not a dog. God, it was so frightening. Somehow, by the grace of God, I had the strength to lift up my gun and shoot at it. I have no idea if I actually hit the creature. Maybe I scared it off. Hell, I don't care. That one shot. That's all it took. It disappeared. It probably took me about 10 minutes to actually open up the zipper to my tent and peek outside. It was pitch black, and everybody else was around it, surrounding my area, looked in confusion and worried. Of course, it was due to the gunshot. The park rangers were on their way. I could see them in the jeep in the distance heading in my direction. I told everyone to settle down that something attacked me. They all looked puzzled. There was no blood on the ground. As we all circled around the tent in my area, the slash marks were the only visible evidence that anything had happened. That and its footprints. Footprints that no one nor the park rangers have ever seen before. I went home that night, and to this day, I have no idea what it was. But I have a pretty good guess. Me and a couple of my buddies were out at the lake having a bonfire. I remember this like it was yesterday, but realistically this happened last fall right before it started to get really cold. We live in eastern Wisconsin, born and raised. Hell yeah, go Green Bay Packers, baby. Anyways, so there we were. It was just me and my two other buds. We had the lawn chairs pulled out, an ice chest full of beer. We had some chips and some finger food, really. But we didn't really have anything that you would really recall an actual dinner. But more just snacks and more booze. We were all kind of drunkenly debating if we were going to do some late night fishing or just call it a night and go home. Needless to say, after a few scary stories and a few more beers later... We decided that we would do a little late night fishing since we were already there and we already had the poles in the back of his truck. So we were just chilling, fishing away, telling jokes and just relaxing. We ran out of beer in the ice chest, but luckily we had another 12 pack in the back of the truck. I desperately tried to get out of my lawn chair. It wasn't that easy. Once I got up, I said I'd be right back to my buds. I turned around and started walking back towards the truck, away from them in the lake. I want to say it was about 11 o'clock, give or take. Might have been a little earlier, or might have been a little closer towards midnight. To be honest, I'm not really sure what time it was, but I knew it was pretty late out. As my drunk ass was wobbling to the truck, I realized I forgot the keys. Dumbass always locks his car, no matter where he is. I mean, it's just us at the lake, and this freaking guy is so paranoid, I swear to God. So, I turned back around and walked back over to the lake to get the keys for my friend. After a couple of minutes of trying to figure out where the hell he put them, he finally gave me the keys and I turned back around to walk towards the truck. Once I got to the truck, I unlocked it and got the beer. I was just about to shut the door when I happened to glance in front of me into the wood line. When I swore I saw something. At first, I thought it was a coyote or something, but when I winced my eyes, I noticed it was far too large to be a coyote. Uh, oh my god, too much beer, I told myself. Maybe I'm just seeing shit. But when I saw this thing reach around the tree bark of the tree that it was standing next to and hop on its back legs, 
I freaked the hell out. I swear to God, that's what I saw. I dropped the beer and ran back towards my friends so freaking fast you couldn't say shish kebab without taking a breath. Oh my god, what the hell was that thing? I kept mumbling and screaming to my friends, trying to motion to them what I saw in the corner by the tree line, but I wasn't making any sense to them at all. They just started laughing at me and just poking fun like I was some retard. I want the China see something in the wood line, little puppy maybe, maybe with a bear, come on. That's what they were all joking at me. But I finally started to calm down and I finally was able to speak clearly to them. Guys, there's something out there. I just saw it right behind the truck at the wood line. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. There's some type of freaking werewolf thing out there. Of course they didn't believe me and they were just sitting there laughing and making fun of me. Until they all heard the howls. As soon as they heard the howls, they all shut up pretty dang fast, I'll tell you that much. The looks on their faces was priceless. Probably the same way I looked when I first encountered the monster, but they didn't see it, but they definitely heard it, as did I. They kept mumbling and asking, what the hell was that? I told them what it was. They just weren't listening, I replied. Finally, I swear after several minutes, we all got together and got in the truck and drove the hell out of there as quickly as possible. I know what I saw, and I know what I heard. I don't care what anyone else says. We saw the dog man. I know this may not seem very scary, as a lot of stories that you read and hear about are much more in depth and way more crazy than what I'm about to tell you, but this is 100% true, and this happened to me last week. During this whole quarantine thing, I needed some fresh air. It's been about a week and a half, I've been stuck in my apartment, and it's I, my wife's driving me up the frickin' wall, okay? I said it. I need to go on a hike. That's something that we like to do, but I needed some me time, if that makes any sense. I love my wife, but I just needed a couple hours to myself, just to think about things, really. Just to get some fresh air and just relax. We live in northern Michigan, and we had just gotten through some serious winter storms. When they say it snows, by golly, it snows. It was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We just had a late lunch. I told my wife, I'm just going to go on a quick hike out there in the back. You see, we own some acres out there on the farm. And like I said before, I needed some me time. She didn't question it. She wasn't going out in that cold. So, I got dressed, grabbed all the gear that I usually grab when I go on hikes, and I went outside. It was a beautiful day out, by the way. Partly cloudy. It was about 32 degrees. Just the way I like it, really. I like it cold, but, you know, that's just how it is up here in the north. So, there I was. Just enjoying nature with my walking stick. I want to say I was about a mile away. Maybe. It didn't seem like it was that long, to be honest with you, so I wasn't quite sure. But we have a lot of property, and even though, our nearest neighbor is about 15 minutes away. For some really weird feeling, I felt like I was being watched. I'm not sure why. I've never really encountered bears or anything. Not that I try to or intend to. But I felt like someone was looking at me or following my tracks or something. I know it sounds really weird, but I just had that gut feeling. I trust my gut. I stopped in my tracks and just listened to see if I could hear anything moving around me. I didn't hear any movement, but still, I knew something was watching me. I turned around and started walking back to my house. It's better to be safe than sorry. I have a walking stick that has a pointed edge on it, but that's about it as far as what I'd grabbed, unfortunately. I want to say about 15 minutes later, that's when I heard the howls. God, I've heard coyotes, but this wasn't a coyote. 
I swear to you, there was something off about its tone. For one, it sounded pretty close, which is usually really rare because they don't like humans. Two, I felt like something was watching me well before I turned around. Whatever made that sound was obviously following me, which is something that a coyote, again, doesn't do. I started to walk a little faster at this point. I started hearing some brush being shoved and branches being snapped in the distance behind me somewhere. I dared not turn around. I was too afraid to accept what might have been behind me. I've heard the stories. I was grabbing my crucifix around my neck the whole way back. And luckily, I made it home without any altercations. I ran inside and locked the doors and ran behind the window. I never did see anything when I looked outside. I don't know if it was just sniffing me out or toying with me. Either way, I'm never going out there to hike alone again. I grew up on a small farm in Brownsville, Texas. You probably don't know where that is because it barely exists even on a map. It's at the very bottom of the state of Texas, right at the border of Mexico. There's really not too much going on down here. I mean, we have some typical crime just like any city, but outside of that, it's just land and country out here. But that's how the locals like it. Anyways, this happened last week. It's a true story. I swear to you, this is true. I was smoking a cigarette on my front porch, just admiring the sunset. We have about 10 acres worth of land. Now to some, that's not quite large, but to city folk, that's humongous. I'm not originally from out here, so to me, this was country. Anyways, I was just admiring the beauty, as I've only been down here for a few years. Now I know that there's no wolves. Uh, but we do have our run-ins with occasional coyotes, but really not too much outside of that. The biggest problem we have is wild boars. Boy, we just hunt the shit out of those little boogers. Well, not all of them are quite small. Some of them are massive. Anyways, I was just smoking my cigarette, just chillin'. The sun was just about to disappear over the horizon. It was starting to get dark. If you don't realize, Texas is just completely flat, just open, flat land. You may come across some hills, but that's it. There's really no scenery with mountains, if that's what you're used to. I was just about to put out my cigarette and head back inside. When I saw it, there was this large beast that was running across the front of our field. It was pretty far out. I want to say maybe a good 40 yards. It was out there, but it was definitely big. You could just tell. It was hunched over like a hunchback, but it was running on its back legs like a man. But it wasn't a man. This thing looked like a dog. Like a big black dog. Just imagine a super-sized German Shepherd that's pitch black running on its back legs like a man hunched over with elongated arms and giant looking claws. At first, I was pretty stunned as I wasn't really sure if I was seeing what I was actually seeing. It all happened so fast. It was like the snap of your fingers or if you just blinked, it was over. It happened that fast. I can't really explain anything else, but from what I saw, the only thing that makes any type of logical sense is that it was the dog man. I live in a small town at the northeastern corner of Texas. The town is called Texarkana, or a city for that matter. It's on the borderline of Arkansas. It's beautiful, but there's terribly not too much to do around here outside of camping or fishing or hiking and stuff like that. But a lot of times, people just cross over the border to Arkansas to do all that. There's a little over 38,000 people in our town, so it's not quite large, but yet it's not terribly small either. 
if that makes any sense. Anyways, if you're from Arkansas or this part of Texas, then you know the legends. There's a lot of legends of this area, especially in Arkansas. They have a lot of myths. I don't know what it is with Arkansas, but they have their fair share of tales. I was out doing some fishing with my brother-in-law last spring. It was around 6 o'clock p.m. We were over at the Bringle Lake Park West. We had our mini cooler full of beer and we were just having a great time as it was the weekend. My brother-in-law was visiting from out of state and I work at the post office. It was a pretty quiet evening. Most of the other boats had already pulled back in. We were the last ones out there. We figured we would just give it another 20 or so minutes and then pull back in and take our winnings back to the truck and go home. It was starting to get dark, and we were already riding back in to shore. That's when we heard the howls. The howling of something. <laughs> We thought maybe it was a coyote, but no. The tone of it was much too powerful and much too deep to be a coyote. Plus, coyotes run in packs, and they usually howl at the same time, so you always hear multiple howls at once. This was one long, deep, close howl. My brother-in-law just looked at me puzzled and asked, Do you guys have wolves out here? I told him, we used to have some, but it's been a long time since any of them have been seen in Texas. I doubt it. Then he asked me, then what the hell was that? I couldn't answer my brother-in-law, as I too was puzzled and had no idea. It could have been a wolf, but something was wrong about it. I just had a very bad feeling about it. As we were just about to pull in, we both saw this young-looking doe running right in front of us to our left. It was pretty crazy because the tree line to the forest up ahead was about 10 yards away. I don't know why the doe was running out in the open right there by the water instead of being close in the trees where it's safer. That's when it happened. Out of nowhere, this large four and a half foot furry beast grabs the doe and runs into the wood line and disappearing within seconds. It all happened so fast. I almost fell on my ass in the boat just witnessing it. What the hell was that? My brother-in-law was screaming out loud to me. It, it looked like a gray wolf. I mean, that's what we used to have here. But no one's seen any in years. Yeah, well, do your wolves walk on the back two legs like humans too? What the fuck, dude? No. No, they don't. That was something else. Outside of being completely puzzled and terrified, we pulled our boat up, got our things, hooked everything back up to the trailer, and we got the hell out of there. I haven't been back there to go fishing since. I live in northern Texas, near the border of Oklahoma. It's very rural and woodsy out here, but that's the way I enjoy it. I've never been much for a city life. I was hiking with my dog. This is something that we do on a regular basis. About 30 minutes into the hike, it was nice and sunny out. It wasn't nighttime, it wasn't Halloween, nor was it a full moon, nothing spooky whatsoever. It was just a nice summer day. I had my ear pods on, listening to some tunes as we walked. Suddenly, I started hearing something through the music. Something that sounded like snapping branches. Something... something close. I stopped and held my dog on his leash and took my pods out of my ear and back into my pocket. 
I just stood there in silence and waited. I didn't hear anything. Hmm, maybe it was just me. So I continued walking on the trail. A couple minutes later, I heard it again. This time, it was much closer. And this time, my dog noticed as well, as he started aggressively tugging at the leash, barking at something in the woods. I never seen him act like this before. Even with other dogs, he acts like he's a big tough guy, but he's really not. I didn't see anything in the woods. I was looking all around. I yanked my dog's leash and I tried to get him to turn around and start heading back home. It took some muscle, but eventually he obliged, still barking and tugging at his leash trying to attack God knows what in the woods nearby. I started to pick up the pace a little bit because I suddenly got chills down my spine. I suddenly had the eerie feeling that I was being watched. By who or what, I don't know. After a few minutes of hiking back down the hill, I suddenly heard some growling noises in the distance behind me somewhere. It did sound like it was a little ways away still. I can't really measure by sound how far away it was, but it wasn't right behind me. Thank God. I've never heard anything like that before, and it scared the bejeebies out of me. My dog and I hightailed it out of there as fast as we could. I was scared out of my mind after hearing God knows what was behind us. We made it home safely and unharmed. To this day, I don't know what the hell I heard. I spoke to a couple of my friends and their families about it. I wasn't expecting anyone to believe me, but one of my friend's family did. They told me they believe it was the dog man. This happened to me last weekend. I'm born and bred in Waco, Texas, which is south of Fort Worth. North, technically central, but look it up if you don't know where it's at. It was a Saturday afternoon, late afternoon if I could recall correctly. I was out by myself on a hike over at Woodway Park. I've been there plenty of times, it's one of my favorite places to go hiking. Anyways, I was alone this day, typically I hike alone, unless I have someone to accompany me but usually I don't. I was just enjoying nature and the good weather before it starts to get too hot. I don't really care for the heat too much, yet I don't care for the winter either. I don't know, I guess I'm just hard-headed. So, I was about two or three hours into my hike. I mean, when I go hiking, I mean I go hiking. I don't just stroll around the block and then call it quits. When I go hiking, it's an all-day affair. I absolutely love it. I always have my walking stick and a packed lunch with plenty of water. This time, I had forgotten my walking stick, but luckily, there's plenty of tree branches and fallen twigs that I could use that worked perfectly fine. The sun was getting ready to set. It was this that hour, I guess. I decided to start turning around and start heading back, just to be safe as I knew I had ventured off a little farther than I usually do. Somewhere on my walk back, I started hearing something moving in the distance. I couldn't tell if it was behind me or somewhere off to my left. Something was definitely following me though, because I heard it more than one time. At first I just brushed it off, maybe it was a doe. Maybe it was a, just a rodent or something. But the second time, it was even louder. And I knew it was no doe. Maybe it was a wild boar. 
I mean, they're everywhere, and they're big too, and their presence is easily noticeable. I started to walk a little bit faster, just in case if it wasn't. I know what you're thinking. Are you just scared of some piggies? No. If you're not from Texas, then you probably just don't understand. These wild boars are fierce. They can be deadly. And they could get massive, too, in size. I knew I shouldn't have had that hummus, because not only was I speed walking, trying to get back to the parking lot because of whatever the hell was following me, but I had to take a shit, too. Normally, I would just find somewhere out in the woods, privately, even though there's nobody else on this trail. Whatever this thing was, I just... I didn't trust it. I just kept going, pinching the whole way. That's when I heard the howling. This time, it sounded like it was right behind me. It scared the living daylights out of me. I twisted around and jumped so fast, and in doing so, I had an accident. That was the least of my worries. I was threatened for my life. I didn't see no figure, but I did see something that was far out in the distance behind me when I turned around. It was those eyes. God. There was something hiding behind some trees. Something dark. Something big. Its eyes were glowing red and seemed like they were directly staring at me. This was pretty far out in the brush and the woods and I could barely see any type of silhouette. Whatever it was was black as midnight. But again, those eyes. God, those eyes. I turned around and hightailed it out of the woods as fast as possible, praying to God that whatever that freak show thing was in the distance wouldn't chase me down. By the looks of it, the thing was probably just as large as I was, but it was no man. I made it out of there in one piece without any harm, but to this day, I've never been back since. I live about 30 minutes north of El Paso, Texas, which is in the western part of the state. There's really not too much going on here, as it is primarily desert. But that's the way it is here, it's always been that way. Anyways. I was out with a couple of my buddies on our quads. We had an RV and we were just doing some off-roading. That's what we usually do in the summertime. Fast forward to that evening. We had built this huge bonfire out in the dirt, and we were cooking up a shitload of food on the grill. The bonfire was absolutely massive. We brought a couple of pallets and broke them down into pieces and made this fire very spectacular. We were having a blast. We were having kind of just like a bros party. There was no chicks with us, it was just us guys. After a couple 24 packs later and a shitload of carne asada in our bellies, we started telling some drunkenly scary stories around the fire pit. Not everybody wanted to get involved, but everybody sat back and drank and enjoyed the night. I happened to be last that night, and I was about halfway through with one of my juicy tales that I do. And then all of a sudden, we all heard the howls. The howls of... At first we thought it was coyotes, but then realized we were way wrong. Dead wrong. When the howls first came, we thought nothing of it. Hell, we even started howling with them in the distance. <coughs> drunkenly. But when we got a response... That's when I almost shit my pants. And I shit you not. After we heard that howl of whatever that beast thing was, we saw something large and black running across behind our RV. 
We all saw it. It wanted to be seen. This thing ran on its back legs, and it was hunched over and periodically tapped on its front arms, paws. I don't know. It was almost like it was galloping. This thing had a human shape, but it was more like a giant dog. Almost like a, a werewolf or something. I don't know. It had black fur, and its eyes were reflecting by the moonlight. It moved so incredibly fast. It was like the snap of your fingers, and the damn thing dis disappeared. We were all pretty freaked the hell out, and we all agreed that we were not going to be staying the night. We packed up all of our crap back onto the truck in the RV keeping the fire pit lit because we were thinking maybe that was the only thing that was keeping that thing away from us at the time. We left within an hour after seeing whatever the hell that was, and we never went back there to play with our quads again. My wife and I were on a week-long vacation to visit some family members on her side down in southern Mexico in the state of Puebla. I won't give the exact town per se for privacy reasons to her family. Upon arrival, we got a taxi and went straight to the hotel. Then, we both hopped into a taxi cab downtown to the food district, that's what I call it at least, because I was craving some authentic sanitas. If you don't know what that is, just imagine a torta with tons of shredded cheese and giant sized. It'll knock your socks off. It's amazing. Anyways, fast forward about three hours of walking around and trying all types of different crazy looking foods and tortilla wraps and god knows what else. Hell, I don't speak Spanish and I don't know what this crap is, but I ate everything I saw that I could get my hands on. After our little feast on the streets, we met up with a couple of her cousins and they took us out to a bar nearby. It was kind of away from the downtown area that was a tourist attraction, and that's when I started feeling just a little bit nervous. I don't have a problem going to different countries, especially third world countries, but I like to stay where it's more populated and touristic. I just feel safer there. But hell, you can't even trust the police down there, so who was I kidding? We ended up at this shack of a bar, if you will. It had a bar on the inside. It looked like a giant barn. It was very outdated, with just a neon light on the outside. Something that you would see in some creep show old school movie town. This big barn bar also had some tables and booths outside surrounded by different various fire pits. It was kind of unique in its own way. The only thing that troubled me was how far away from our hotel we were. Her two cousins drove us about 30 minutes southeast of the main city of Puebla where the airport was where our hotel was located at. I don't know why we had to drive so far out to get some drinks when there was plenty of bars right there where we just were. Something didn't add up. I didn't think too much of it at the time because her family is originally farther south from where we were, so maybe it was just a halfway point for some of her family that maybe wanted to surprise her and meet us halfway. And to just my luck, that's exactly what happened. When we arrived to the bar, some of her other family members that lived about an hour or so more south actually were at the bar waiting for our arrival. I guess they just figured it was just easier just to meet up halfway from where we were staying. We had a great time. I mean, Super Mr. Fiesta Gringo over here. The fish tacos never ended, nor did the Medellos. Good God, I got super faded on their Patron too. I lost track of how many shots I actually took that night. You should have saw me. I was actually dancing to their music. A couple steps forward, cha-cha-cha, a couple steps back and twist. Something like that. At least I thought I was doing it right, but then again, I was super drunk. But hey, I was having a good time. Well, that good time ended when I had to go to the restroom. 
Unfortunately, their restrooms were outside. Like I said, it was a very old barn. Now take it, usually when you're in a foreign country you never leave alone anywhere. But this time I did. I was drunk, happy, surrounded by family. I just felt safe. So I let them know I was going to go out to take a piss. I stumbled my way outside and tried to find the restroom. When I was outside, I saw these sketchy looking guys drinking their cervezas and smoking a cigar. I didn't speak terribly too much Spanish, but I knew the basics, so I used my tough guy voice and asked, ¿Dónde está el baño que tengo que defecar? And for those of you that don't understand, that meant, where's the restroom? I have to poop. Like I said, I was drunk, and I had to go. They laughed at me, and they pointed to their right in the bushes. I looked ahead and noticed that they didn't have a bathroom. It looked like I had to go into the woods and handle it myself. Huh. No big deal. I've been camping a hundred times. Nothing new to me. Only problem was, I didn't have any toilet paper. Luckily, one of them handed me a roll as I was walking by. They must have read my mind or something. I told him thank you, and I continued into the woods. So, there I was. Out in the woods, crouched down, taking a shit in some weeds. I was a little bit uncomfortable, I won't lie. Not that I was going to be watched or anything. I think it was just because of the whole miscomfort thing. That and I didn't want something biting my asshole while I'm taking a dump. While I was crouched over handling my business, I started hearing these noises surrounding me. I couldn't truly identify what direction they were coming from, but something was moving around. I could hear the twigs of branches being snapped and... I could hear footsteps in the distance, heavy footsteps. Something large was nearby, and it sounded like it was getting closer. I started looking all around me, thinking maybe it was those guys, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe I wasn't alone in these woods after all. I need to hurry up and pinch it off, I told myself. I heard something again, and I turned around, and that's when I saw it. This thing looking straight back at me out in the distance behind some trees. It looked like it was probably about 20 meters away, but I could, I could see it. It had glowing amber eyes, and its body was black as midnight, so it was very camouflaged behind the trees in the darkness. I could tell it was some type of canine by the way its ears looked. Its ears were pointed. As soon as we locked eyes, that's when I heard its growl. Its growls were something abnormal that I've never heard before. I grew up being a boy scout and I've seen my fair share of wildlife throughout the years, but this was something that I've never encountered nor seen on TV ever before in my entire life. This was something cryptid. This was something else. It's a good thing my pants were already down or I would have made a serious mess on myself. Just when I thought I was going to pinch it off, I ended up shitting out some more. I was extremely terrified and frozen in fright. I couldn't move a muscle. This thing was just staring at me with this evil dead stare. It never moved. I could only hear its growls. Then, somebody shot off a gunshot in the air nearby. I think it was one of the guys that I spoke to earlier that handed me the toilet paper. Did they see what I saw or was somebody getting shot? I don't know what happened. It scared the crap out of me. And by the time I turned back around to see this beast, it was gone. It had completely disappeared. I was so frickin' scared. I was thinking a hundred things a minute. My mind was going berserk. 
I didn't know what to think. I tried to wipe my ass as quickly as possible and rushed back over to the barn's direction. Those guys were there. They were walking in my direction when I approached them. They weren't shooting anybody else. They were shooting at whatever that thing was in the woods. One of them had happened to see its movement in the bushes. Thank God they did. Or else, I may have been its easy midnight snack. Last spring break, my buddies and I took a trip down the Rosarito in Mexico. We partied our ass off for four days straight. We even made some friends with a couple of the locals that showed us around some areas that even we didn't know about, and two of my friends had family in the area. We were only supposed to be down there for four days, so we lived it up like each day was our last, because a lot of you know that the peso's pretty much worthless. It is so cheap down there. You could live like a king on seafood and anything else for that matter, for a fraction of the price. I know what you're going to say, but on our last night there, we were out on the beach drinking. And there is some cliff areas along the left side heading farther south, so we decided to go check out the little trails that sped off from the beachfront. We were just having fun, telling jokes, laughing, and just enjoying ourselves to be quite honest. There were six of us, four of us that came down here from the states and two locals, uh, one of them was a cousin of one of the friends. We were just walking around this path, it was really weird. At the beginning, it was just a skinny, dirt, sandy path. Then it got wider, and it seemed like we were entering in some woods type of environment, which I was really not familiar with as we were just in the main part of the touristic city part. But there is land out there. Uncharted land. I asked one of my buddies if he could ask the locals where this went to. When he asked him in Spanish, the guy just laughed and shrugged and said something back in Spanish to my friend. My friend turned over to me and he was like, He's never seen this trail before, so we're just kind of winging it, you know? We were all just having a good time, faded. None of us truly respected the seriousness of the current situation at hand. I don't know how long it was, but it felt like hours at this point. The liquor was starting to wear off, and I started questioning how deep we were actually going and maybe we should turn back around. One of my other buddies agreed with me, and suggested to everyone that we should take 15 minutes just to recuperate before we started heading back to the beach. I know exactly why he said that, but we all obliged and agreed. Him and his girlfriend left off on their own into the woods. I know what they were doing. They went to go have a quickie and get it on, George of the Jungle style, which was fine by me. I just wanted to get back towards the beach close to where our hotel was located at. I was done with not knowing where we were. That bugged me. About ten minutes had passed. That's when I started hearing some noises. But it wasn't just me. We all heard it. The sounds of vines and branches being snapped from the left, then from the right. Was there some coyotes in the woods? Was it just our friends coming back from their little shenanigan? I don't know. Because as soon as the noises started, they suddenly stopped all at once. I stood up and started looking around. I started calling out to my friend and his girlfriend, telling them to hurry their asses up to get back to us. Maybe they got lost and didn't know what direction to walk back to. Or maybe it was something else. God, I hope it's them. Probably about 30 seconds later, I see my buddy and his girlfriend walking back in our direction from the brush up ahead. Hurry up, you guys, I said. I hope your dumbasses get poison oak. I heard some shit in the woods. We all did. We need to get back to the beach. I motioned. As soon as my friend and his girlfriend were going to reply. That's the first time that we all heard the howling. 
the howling of something. Something cryptid. It wasn't a coyote. I'm native to California, and we're loaded with them. I know what they sound like. Those were no coyotes. This was something else. Yeah, uh, let's get going, guys, my friend said. And we all started walking a hell of a lot faster than we were earlier back towards the beach. I was almost at a speed jog, as everybody else was taller than I was. One of their steps was two of mine. I'm only five foot seven. Everybody else was basically six foot or above, damn it. Guys, slow down, I obliged. But nobody listened. Everybody continued to speed walk slash jog until they saw the beachfront. Finally, we could see the water in front of us. It was still a good 30 to 40 yards in front of us, but still, it was in view, which was more motivating than before earlier when we were just surrounded by brush and trees. It seemed like the closer we got to the water, the more we could hear this thing behind us getting closer. We could hear its footsteps galloping louder and louder as we got closer and closer to our destination of the what we thought was the safe zone. As we were getting closer to the water, I started tuning in what the others were saying. One of my friends was praying. The other one was talking to himself. He was mumbling something, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. And then one of the locals that was with us, this girl, she kept crying as she was saying something in Spanish. Ay Dios mío, el hombre lobo. Ay Dios mío, el hombre lobo. Like I said, I don't speak Spanish, but later on she told us what she saw. She saw the eyes of the dog man. I had no idea what she was talking about, but once we got back to safety she explained the whole mythology of this creature thing in Mexico. Supposedly, it's known all over, not just down there. I've never heard of this thing. I did quite a bit of research since then, because the curiosity was just overpowering. Needless to say, we never went down the Rosarito since, and I'll never go hiking while I'm drunk ever again. My name is Miguel de la Rosa, and I live in southern Mexico. When this happened, I was seven years old. It was just me and a few of the local kids that we all used to play together. I was always the smallest of the group, so I was usually the one that got dared into doing stupid things, and I was always the one getting picked on. This happened during the Day of the Dead. I shit you not, this is based off a true story. You may not think it's that scary, but it was scary as hell to us. There's this one house in the neighborhood, towards the end of the road down the hill, that everybody talks about, but talks about it low-key, if that makes any sense. Nobody lives in this house. Everyone says it's cursed. They say that a creature killed the family that lived in that house many, many years ago. They see this creature was as large as a man, but looked like a dog. They said its hands were more like claws than anything else and it had the hunger for human flesh. Basically, it was a dog man. Basically, the story goes that a man and his wife and son were brutally murdered in that house. I don't remember what year it was, but I know it was a really long time ago. We live in a very small village, so everybody knows everybody and everybody knows everybody's business. So we all knew the legends. Even at our age, we were told the stories. Of course, this story, the curiosity almost killed the kid. My friends had dared me to go into the house and to exit through the backyard and hop the fence where they would be waiting. Of course, I told them no. Then they called me chicken and said that I was a wussy. And they said, if I didn't do it, they would tell little Marie that I had a crush on her. 
And I couldn't have that happen. No way. I didn't want her knowing. So, I did it. They all watched me from a distance as I slowly walked up the creaking wooden steps to the front porch to the front door. The door was locked. I looked back at my friends and I shrugged. They told me, rip the board open. There was one board that was in front of the door blocking it with a couple of nails. So, I put my fingers in between the crack areas where it fit and I started yanking at the board until it finally budged and collapsed onto the floor. I reached around the knob, turned it, and opened the door. As it opened, it creaked like a scary movie. God, it was horrifying. And the smell, the smell of the musty air that was inside the house almost made me throw up. But I couldn't turn back now. No. I must go. And I stepped inside. The house was covered in cobwebs and dust. It was completely pitch black inside. No one has been here for years. Probably decades. I didn't even have a flashlight. God, we were so stupid back then. I started looking around the house, trying to find my way to the backyard as quickly as possible. The less time in this freak show house, the better, I told myself. Eventually, I made my way to the back of the house where the kitchen was located at by the patio to the backyard. The sliding glass door was cracked, but it looked like it may have still been movable. I approached it and unlocked the lever and opened the sliding glass door. I took a couple of steps onto the back patio and took a look at my surroundings. All I could hear was some crickets in the distance. Scattered clouds with nothing but shiny stars in the black sky. The wind was heavy, the trees were bending in the motion. My eyes wandered the surroundings. That's when I heard this, the sound of something growling. My heart started to pump so hard it felt like it was going to break through my sternum. I was so scared. What was growling outside? I couldn't see anything. I examined everywhere in the backyard. That's when I saw the opening in the fence line in the distance. Upon closer examination, that opening was actually a destroyed section of the back wooden fence. Destroyed by weather, by time, or maybe by something. That's when I heard the grunting, growling noises again, the same ones as before. I noticed that this time, the growling noise was coming directly in the direction of where that fence had been collapsed. I squinted my eyes and tried to examine that area just a little bit closer, even though it was pitch black outside. And that's when I saw it. I saw the dog man. It was hunched over in the brush, right behind the fence line. Its red glowing eyes were staring directly at me, watching my every move. This creature was as black as midnight with pointy sharp ears. Its body was full of fur. The only miscolor was its eyes. I felt a tingle go down my leg. It was, it was warm. I had peed my pants out of fright. I just stood there in shock, terrified and motionless. Through the grace of God, I was able to turn around and run back into the house towards the front door as fast as I could. I opened the front door and slammed it shut behind me. I almost fell down the steps as I ran towards the front street. I looked around and I found my friends hiding behind the neighbor's trash cans right beside me to my left. They were totally in fear and shock. I ran over to them. They were asking me all kinds of questions like, Did you hear it too? Did you hear it? 
I could talk. I was so out of breath. I just sat there with them. I just nodded my head yes, trying to catch my breath. Then I spoke. Yes. I heard it. I saw it. I saw the dog man. They all stopped talking and stared at me. Needless to say, we never went adventuring to that house ever again. This happened to me and my family last summer. We were spending the weekend up in Yosemite National Park up in Northern California. I've been there before, but only a couple of times when I was a kid with my mom when I was real young. This is the first time I actually went out there to go camping with my now family. Of course, the last time I was there, I think I was around 8 or 10 years old. So going there again was almost like a brand new experience even for myself. It was just myself, my wife, and my son. It wasn't no big party or anything, but we all enjoy camping, especially myself. My wife actually never went camping before until she started dating me, so I am super jazzed that she actually enjoyed it. When we first arrived, it was absolutely breathtaking, as I remember as a kid. But then again, I was young, so it's not like I could remember everything. I really just remembered, like, certain situations. Like that time my mom bought a whole bunch of foos gold and put it all over our camping section and just sat there and drank with my stepdad and just laughed as I thought we struck rich and was collecting all the gold. Look, Mom, we're rich. And then some neighboring child coming over saying, oh, I could help. And I was like, no, this is my section. Go find your own gold. And then later on, my mom took me to the souvenir shop and I gave all the gold back and the cashier gave me $5. Now as an adult, my mom telling me the real story... She paid that lady to do that for me. It was cute. So I plan to do that with my son this time. And now that I'm reminiscing, I also recall that a bear had broken into the vehicle of our neighbors that night. But I'm not trying to scare you off. Just yet. Anyways, I had reserved our camping weekend at least six months in advance if I can remember correctly. It's a very desired place. It's absolutely gorgeous in every way, and it has multiple waterfalls like everywhere you look. It's gorgeous. Once we checked in, got the map, and finally figured out where our spot was after about 30 minutes, we finally started to set everything up, which included the chairs, the ice chest, the tent itself, our things, brick chargers for our phones, Bluetooth speakers so we could jam, charcoal and some wood that we bought, and so on. After we had finished setting everything up, we had a late lunch. It consisted of hot dogs and hamburgers, and plenty of chips to go around. I tossed back a couple beers while my wife had some water and my son had a Dr. Pepper. After we finished eating, we decided we should go on one of the hikes that is nearby our spot, just because... And then, once we get back, I'm sure that we would have earned a whopping hunger for dinner around the fire. Fast forward a couple of hours. We were trying to wrap up the hike as we were already on our way back to our spot. I couldn't ask for a better day. The weather was absolutely gorgeous. I happened to come across some weird-looking tracks on the way back in some mudded areas along the trail. I'm no expert but I spent the good half of the beginning years of the Boy Scouts. At first, I thought they belonged to some coyotes or maybe a large wolf, but I was wrong, terribly wrong. Upon closer examination, I noticed how large these tracks were, larger than anything I have ever seen before, but it was definitely canine. It had a large white heel with four toes with the points above them from the nails. But these were... These were different. These tracks that I found were at least twice the size of my hand, and I have a big hand. I'm six foot two. It had the same layout as a wolf track, but much, much larger. My family asked me why I looked so puzzled when I was kneeling down in the mud. I tried to explain to them that this is something I've never seen, but it's much, much too large to be anything that I've ever encountered or read about or seen before. 
I didn't want to spook them, so I told them it's really nothing to worry about. Probably just an extra jumbo daddy out there somewhere, and I laughed it off, and we continued to walk back towards our spot. The sun was setting by the time that we had arrived. I informed everybody it's time to get dinner on, and then we could tell some scary stories around the fire. I had a full rack of baby back ribs that had been marinating with some sweet baby raised barbecue sauce for the past 24 hours. It was a fantastic feast, I'll tell you that much. While I was telling some ghost stories with my wife and son, I swore to the right of me behind my son's head in the distance in the woods, I thought I saw something looking back at us. It was in the corner of my eye and I was in the middle of this really spooky tale about some paranormal insane asylum or something. But I swear, those eyes were glowing. I brushed it off, as it was kind of hard to tell anyways. It was pretty dark, and it seemed like it was kind of far away. But whatever it was, was definitely scoping us out. But like I said, I didn't really pay it any mind. I'm guessing around 11 o'clock we all decided it was time for bed and got inside of our tent with our sleeping bags and blankets. Sometime in the middle of the night, I had to pee. I didn't want to wake anybody else up, so I slowly got up and tried to exit the tent. But right before I grabbed that zipper is when I heard and felt the vibrations in the ground nearby. They were footsteps. Footsteps of something incredibly large. I've never felt anything like this before in my entire life. I had to see. I had to get a glimpse of what was out there. The curiosity was killing me. I leaned down on my knees and elbows and slowly opened the side of the zipper slowly. I want to say I opened the zipper about six to seven inches. I used my right pointer finger to spread open the zipper just enough for me to peek outside. What I saw has been haunting me ever since. There is this huge, furry man-beast that stood up like a man. It was hunched over, prancing around our area, investigating its surroundings on our spot. This thing had pitch black fur, extra long arms, and its claws were incredibly freakish looking. Its snout was long, like a dog, but it wasn't fully a dog. God, I had no idea what it was. Its eyes glowed an amber color, I swear. I've... I almost pissed myself. The appearance of this thing and the way it sounded when it was grunting was purely abnormal, unknown, and incredibly horrifying. <laughs> Somehow, I gathered the courage to grab my air horn from my backpack that luckily was beside me so I didn't make any noise. I aimed it at the zipper, and I pressed the button. Not only did I wake the hell out of my family, probably scared them to death, but it scared the shit out of whatever that thing was outside, too. I saw it just lift its head up and freak the hell out and dart into the woods as quickly as possible on its back legs. Thank God I had that air horn, or else next it may have made its way to our tent. Needless to say, I explained everything to my family as best as possible. We gathered our things as quickly as we could. We got in my car, and we left that night. I know our neighbors were pretty pissed off about the noise. I explained everything to them, but of course they didn't believe me. But you know what? I don't really give a crap. We were getting the hell out of there. We haven't been back to Yosemite since.
This happened to us last weekend. I can't express the fear enough. My family and I were camping out by the Smoky Mountains down in the southern area of Knoxville, Tennessee. There are a couple of different state parks that we enjoy going to, but the one that we went to this last time is the last time I'll ever go there again. This was supposed to be a three-day getaway. Especially during the whole quarantine thing, not everybody was still open, but this place was, and it was surprising to us, so we definitely wanted to take advantage of it while we had the time off. It was just me, my wife, and my son. It was just a little getaway. We've been big campers pretty much most of our lives, as we are native to this area and we love the outdoors. After we set everything up, I started preparing a nice little late lunch before the sun was going to set in a few hours. It was just something quick. It was just some hot dogs and some chips and a side of potato salad. After I got the charcoal out, got everything prepped and ready to rock, we ate like kings and a queen. After we finished everything up, I wanted to go on a little hike with the family before the sun set. We've never camped on this side of the campgrounds before, and I was eager to explore the area. Of course, my son didn't want to go. He just wanted to play with his iPad. But my wife talked some sense into him. I'm telling you, ice cream could really go a long way. That, and the threat of not having that iPad for the remainder of our trip. Anyways... We're on this hiking expedition, right? It was only going to be a couple of miles. Nothing fancy. I just wanted to get a little bit of exercise after the long drive. And to work off some of the hot dogs that we had for lunch along the way. It was so gorgeous out. I can't even express how beautiful this area is. Well, most of Tennessee is gorgeous for that matter. If you're into the whole woods and green scenario for scenery. We definitely are. I'm not a desert person, neither is my wife. My son doesn't really give a crap about anything, to be honest, but I'm just going based off of my perspective for this story. Anyways, fast forward about an hour or so. I'm just guessing now. We're walking back towards camp, and I start hearing these noises around us like something breaking branches or fiddling around, or you kind of know the sound that I'm talking about. If you don't... You're lucky. The first time that we started hearing these branches snapping, I just paid it no mind. I just thought it was just some type of local wildlife, nothing really to worry about. But as we kept walking, we noticed that we kept hearing the same sounds. But as we continued our path back to our camp, I started to notice that these sounds were becoming louder. In the back of my head, that meant whatever it was was getting closer and was definitely following us. At this point, I told my wife and my son to walk in front of me and I would keep up in the rear, just in case. A few minutes later, I heard something snap behind me. Out of reflex, I spun around really quick to see what it was. That's when I saw it. This large black beast poking its head out from around the tree. This thing had pointy ears and glowing red eyes. It was about four and a half feet tall, but again, I'm just guessing. It looked like a wolf, but its posture was like mine. Just a little shorter. What the hell is this thing? I turned back around quickly to motion to my wife and son to run for it. As I did, I turned back around. The creature was gone. It happened that fast, I swear to you. This is a true story. We ran back to the camping site as quickly as possible. We grabbed what we could, and we got the heck out of there that day. We never did go back for the rest of our things. I was just too scared. 
and I wasn't willing to risk my family's lives, nor my own. Last year, I was visiting some family in Clarksville, Tennessee, which is at the northern end, north of Nashville. There's really not terribly too much going on over there, but that's where my grandparents lived and we were out there visiting them for about a week. I am a 14-year-old female, and this story is 100% true. I was just hiking on my grandparents' property as they own several acres around the Tennessee and Kentucky borderline. I was deep in the woods one day, as it's my favorite place to be. I had just had lunch, and I had a few hours to spare. I didn't really know anybody else or any kids my age, for that matter, in the surrounding neighborhood, as the next-door neighbors were a couple miles away. They lived in the boondocks. All I had with me was my water bottle and a walking stick that had one of those sharp metal points at the end. A couple of hours later, I was on my walk back to my grandparents' house. I suddenly had the feeling that I was being watched. I don't know why I was getting this feeling because there was no evidence whatsoever to even back it up. I just felt it right in my gut. Something was following me. The sun was starting to set, and it started to get a little dark outside. I knew I had stayed out longer than I definitely should have, and I don't want to freak out my grandparents as I don't have cell phone signal where I'm at. Not that they had a cell phone to use anyways. They only have a house phone that's dated back to the 1990s. But still, I knew I needed to get home quick. Tennessee is known for coyotes and black bears. Definitely those black bears. I started to speed walk as I just had that feeling in my gut, and I knew I was still a little ways out. That's when I heard the noises. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that was. It scared the crud out of me. Remember, I'm a 14-year-old female. Heck, an air horn would scare the crap out of me right now, especially in the woods when it's getting dark. I ran as fast as I could. I knew I was going in the right direction. I've walked this path a hundred times visiting my grandparents throughout the years, but I've never encountered that snarling noise of whatever was in those woods with me that day. I live in Cosby, Tennessee, which is located at the southern eastern corner near the border of North Carolina near the Smoky Mountains. I worked at the church that's locally there called the Powerhouse Church right there on Crosby Highway. Anyways, it was one late evening. Everybody had left for the night. I was wrapping things up. It was probably about 8 o'clock at night. When I was on the front porch, I was reaching in my pocket for my keys to leave. When I swore, I saw something in the distance. Across the street, and I mean... Literally, across the street from our church, there's this long, windy, dirt gravel road that leads past some trailers into the mountains in the woods. That's when I saw it. There was this huge black beast darting in front of this white house that was right there at the bottom of the hill. There was only one house at the very end of that road. A single white house with red shingles. This black beast, at first I thought it was a bear. As this thing was running in front of this house, it turned its head at me, stopped, jumped on its back hind legs, and galloped into the woods within like three seconds. Maybe less. It all happened so fast. 
Now I know that bears do hop up on their back two legs to seem larger to scare off any predators or to defend its kin or babies. But this thing was like running like a man. I was nowhere near it. I was across the street at our church. I don't know what the hell that thing was. But I could definitely take a guess. I live in a small town called Crossville, Tennessee. It's located between Nashville and Knoxville. It's a smaller town, which is exactly what I like about it. I couldn't imagine living in Nashville. There's just way too many people for me there. I was hiking last Sunday afternoon. This is a public place that a lot of people know about. It wasn't an all-day affair, as it's only about two miles long. It's called Soldier's Beach Trail at Meadow Park Lake. It's absolutely breathtaking. I love this place so much. It's one of my favorite places to go hiking. For the past couple of weeks, I've been doing my hikes at night instead of during the day for weather purposes and for some peace of mind to be away from everybody else that's hiking. It's kind of like when you go camping. You go camping to get away from society, not to join them. Same thing goes with hiking, in my opinion. When I go hiking, I want it just to be myself. I don't want to be waving and saying hi and having conversations with other hikers while I'm out there. I just want to be alone. Well, last Sunday was the last time I will ever go hiking in the night ever again. And that'll be the last time I ever go hiking there either, day or night. When I was out there... I heard a lot of weird things that I'm not used to hearing. Yes, you occasionally hear some coyotes howling in the distance. Sometimes you'll hear some things moving in the brush here and there. Sometimes you'll see some squirrels, some deer. I mean, it's wildlife, you know what I mean? You're in the south, and you're surrounded by the woods. This was different. Not only did I get that crazy feeling that I was being followed, but I started hearing footsteps. These footsteps had weight to them. I could feel the vibration beneath me. They were slow and hard. There was a couple times I had to stop and look around me with my flashlight. But of course... I never saw a thing. When I was finishing up my loop back to the car, I heard it again. That time was much louder than the previous times. It started to freak me out and I suddenly got goosebumps all over my body. That's when I heard some growling sound to my right. It was still kind of far off in the distance, but it wasn't a normal growl that I'm used to hearing. That's when I saw this black silhouette in the pines. It was big, whatever it was, and its eyes were glowing. The eyes were more visible than anything else around its silhouette. It was dark and large. Its eyes... God, its eyes. Whatever it was, was demonic. It had to have been. This was no man, and it's nothing I've ever encountered before. It snarled at me. I took off in a high-speed run back to my car. I don't know if this thing followed me. I didn't care. I had to get out of there. I made it to my car in one piece. That thing never did follow me. I told a couple of my buddies about it. They didn't believe me, of course. But I know what I saw. I live in a small town called Paul Mall. No, not Paul Wow, the people's champ. What it do, baby? But I'm talking about Paul Mall. 
It's on the borderline, and it's northeast of Nashville, northwest of Knoxville. Kind of in the middle, if that makes any sense, north on the 127. If you're familiar with Jamestown, we're just north of that. Anyways, I was just hanging out with my buddy Caesar. We were having a couple beers at a local bar playing some pool. I want to say it was about 9 o'clock at night. We were getting ready to wrap things up as it was a Sunday night and we had to get ready to go work in the morning. As we left the bar, we just went outside and freaked our black and milds. Smoked them, talked a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, we're old military buddies so we had a lot to catch up on. As we were talking though, that's when we heard the howls. Now, he's native to Tennessee, and they're loaded with coyotes, as do in California, where I'm originally from. But this didn't sound like any coyote I nor Caesar have ever heard before. We both just stood there, leaning over the wooden post. I looked at Caesar and said, Hmm, didn't sound like any coyote I've ever heard of. He looked back at me and smiled. No, sir. That was no coyote. That was something else. Puzzled, I couldn't help but ask. Well, what the hell was it then? It wasn't a bear. He just looked at me and asked, Are you sure you really want to know? I mean, you're probably not going to believe me, but there are tales and myths in Tennessee. I was like, whatever, dude, just tell me. And he told me about the dog man. About the beast that resembles what Hollywood calls a werewolf. But they're real. They're real beings that live out in the woods. Now, of course, I tried to pull his bullshit card. I thought maybe he just had one too many beers and he was just pulling my leg. But he wasn't. He leaned over to me and whispered close to my ear. Don't move. But look straight ahead of you across the street between that bridge and that far tree. Look long and hard. Let your eyes adjust to the darkness. I rolled my eyes and did as he said. At first, I didn't see a thing. But then, that's when I saw something, movement in the brush. As I winced my eyes and adapted more, I saw some kind of black silhouette in the distance. It had the shape of a man, but it was wrong. Its eyes were glowing, like a reflection of a cat in the moonlight. Its eyes had an amber color. They were so bright, they were almost impossible not to see. At first, I didn't believe him. I had never heard of a dog man before. It sounded ridiculous. A man-wolf beast that's real that lives out in the woods? I mean, it sounded like something that Hollywood would make up. But it's true. I saw it with my own two eyes. I saw the Dogman. And they do exist. I was camping with my family last spring out in Knoxville, Tennessee near the Smoky Mountains. It was absolutely stunning and gorgeous out there. As we are not originally from Tennessee, we had just moved out there last year. It was supposed to be just a two-day getaway. When we first arrived, we unpacked our things, set up camp, and started getting the food on the grill. We had one of those $5 Bluetooth wireless speakers that you could play music on, and we were just listening to music as we cooked. It was pretty humid which is something that we're still not used to. But it's not as bad as Florida. 
I went to high school down in Palm Beach Gardens, and let me tell you, you could feel it. The wetness in the air. It's quite disgusting. Let's just say that I moved and joined the military straight out of high school just to get the hell out of that state. True story. We wrapped up some hamburgers and hot dogs along with some chips with some soda and waters. The evening was starting to kick in as the sun was just starting to set over the horizon. The beautiful mountains in the distance were just breathtaking. It was just green everywhere you looked. It was gorgeous. So, I broke out the s'mores, got the fire cooking pretty good, and we started telling some ghost stories around the fire pit. By this time, it was pitch black outside. The only lights you could see were in the stars of the sky. It was a partly cloudy night and began to get quite chilly that evening. I was annoyed because I kept getting all the damn melted marshmallows all over my fingers and it was sticky as hell. And there was no bathroom for me to go off and wash it off so I had to waste good mountain water that I had packed up in the ice chest just to rinse off my hands. Because the public fountain and toilets were a little ways away and I just I was just too lazy to walk down there to be honest. After a few ghost stories and a couple of beers later, I decided to call it a night, and we all went to sleep in our tent. Everybody else seemed to have fallen asleep a hell of a lot faster than me. I'm always the last one to go to sleep. I toss and turn, and I can never get comfortable. Even at home, it's not just a camping thing. Even when I'm at the house, it takes me literally 45 minutes before I think I actually fall asleep. I try not to think too hard or think of too many different things while I'm laying down, but even when I try to clear my mind, it's like impossible for me to go to sleep. I don't understand. I must have dozed off for a few hours, because when I woke up, I was completely and utterly tired still, but I had the urge to pee. I looked at my watch and it was about 1am, give or take. My wife and daughter were still fast asleep, but I didn't want to wake them up. I didn't need any help walking to the restroom. It was a little ways away, though. But I figured, it's fine, as long as I have my flashlight. So, I put on my chanclas, grabbed my flashlight, and slowly unzipped the tent door as quietly as possible, not trying to wake up my family. I slowly stepped outside while I was trying to put on my sweat jacket at the same time. That's right, it's Captain Multitasker in the flesh, baby. It was cold as hell outside. My nips were rock hard, they could have scratched glass. Whoa, I didn't think it got cold like this out here. I was really surprised. So. I zipped down the zipper to the tent so that no creatures or little critters could go inside while I was gone. I clicked on my flashlight and started walking down the dirt path towards the public pit bathroom. As I was walking, I suddenly had the urge that I was being watched. I don't know why I suddenly had this fear in the back of my mind but it gave shivers down my spine. I started to walk a little faster. Yes, I think I was psyching myself out, and I started telling myself to relax. You're a grown man. There's nothing to worry about. You got your flashlight, and you're just going to go use the restroom. That's it. So fast forward a few minutes. I reach the pit of destiny, handle my business, and I'm walking back towards our camping location where our tent is. I'm about 20 yards away. I can see the tent clear in the distance in front of me. That's when I heard the howl. I stop and froze in my tracks. Whoa. Now, Tennessee doesn't have wolves. They have coyotes, but that's it. 
coyotes run in packs, so I would have heard more than one howl if it was coyotes, and plus, I know what they sound like. They're loaded in California. This was completely different. Whatever this is was alone. And it's... And it sounded... Off. I started flashing my flashlight in all directions, trying to see if this thing was close to me, or was it far off in the distance. I couldn't really tell because the house sounded so loud, it seemed like it was right next to me somewhere, but it echoed all around me. I had no idea where this thing was, and that frightened me even more. I turned around and started moving my flashlight from left to right. And for a split second, my flashlight gazed upon this black furry silhouette of this beast-looking dog. Its eyes glowed red like some hellhound. It was hunched over, but it was clearly more than four feet high. As soon as my flashlight beamed on it, it disappeared into the brush. I almost fell behind out of fright. It was the scariest thing I have ever seen in my life. It felt like I was in some horror movie. I was shaking all over. I turned around and hightailed it as quickly back to my tent as possible. I got back in the tent, woke everybody up, tried to explain what the hell I saw out there. They were still half asleep, not wanting to believe or accept anything I was saying, but they could tell I was deadly scared and telling the truth. My wife and I grabbed as much as we could. I grabbed my car keys, my wallet, and some essentials that were still inside the backpack on the inside of the tent, and we got inside my truck and drove off. We never went back for the rest of our things. I live in Mexico, about a two hours drive south of the Arizona-New Mexico border. I was visiting my grandparents from a neighboring town. I stay the weekend with them, help out around the house, and do some minor chores as they are kind of elderly. I never knew my father. He took off when I was very young, so it's just been me and my siblings and my mom. And of course my grandparents too, but like I said, they live in a different town over. I'm a 19 year old female. I was in the backyard hang drying some clothing on some wire. It was a windy day and the sun was beaming hard in the sky. It was quite hot that afternoon and I felt like I was gonna die. It was just hotter than usual, but my grandparents don't have air conditioning, nor does my mom, so I'm kind of used to it. I just complain anyways. So my grandparents live in the desert, basically. I mean, there are some various trees in the distance, but it's primarily just dirt and fields out there. It wouldn't be smart to wander off out here if you don't know where you're going. Let's just say that much. In the distance, I was just gazing and just my eyes were wandering. I was just pinning things up on the wire, as I said. And I saw this coyote-looking wolf. I couldn't tell. It was pretty far out. It was running towards the hill that was out farther out. At that point, it would disappear from my view. The weird thing about it, though, was this coyote was completely black. The Mexican wolves, they're typically not. They're more of a dark brownish tan color... And this one was at least three times the size of the ones that are local to this area. The scariest thing about this thing was right before it crossed over the hill. It turned back at me, I swear you not. And it hopped up on its back legs and ran over the hill on its back two legs. Like a human. I've never seen a wolf coyote, any canine for that matter, ever do something like that before. It's completely unheard of, and to be realistic, I don't think it's scientifically possible. I talked to my grandmother about it. 
she's a very superstitious woman. Let's just say that. She said to beware. Stay clear of the dog man. I was having a solo camping trip. I was recording a little documentary camping thing for YouTube. It's where I just hop in my truck and I just record myself doing camping activities in various national parks. And then I put it all together for a YouTube video. It seems to be doing quite well, if I say so myself. Anyways, what happened last year has kept me out of the state of Tennessee ever since. I had booked a reservation a few months in advance. I drove down to the southern part of the eastern part of the state of Tennessee by the Smoky Mountains in a place called Cates Cove. If you can't find it on the map, just look up the town called Townsend. It's just right south of there. I had everything packed up in the back seat of my Chevy truck. I had one of those pull-out tents that hook up to the bed of the truck inside so you're not technically camping on the ground. I always felt I was safer camping in the back of the truck instead of on the floor, just to avoid bugs and stuff like that, nonetheless, of course critters and spiders and god knows what else. Come to find out, the bugs and critters and skunks and little whatevers were the least of my worries that night. After I had set everything up, I had a late lunch and decided I had a few hours to spare so I wanted to go on a hike that was nearby on the campsite. I decided to go at Abrams Falls Trail. It's about a five mile hike that loops around the area. I heard it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm hiking this trail, and luckily it's not too difficult as I'm a little chubby. It was so green outside, it was so beautiful. You could hear the birds chirping in the trees, it had a slight breeze, and the humidity wasn't too bad today. I heard that people normally see deer, skunks, sometimes coyotes, even black bears. That's the only thing that really worried me was the black bears. Coyotes don't really bother people. They're just wild dogs that are hungry. I mean, that's just the way I look at it. So I saw some deer running. Didn't see any skunks, thank God. And it was just a nice hike. I was on my way back when I saw it. At first, I saw the black silhouette of something up ahead. It wasn't directly on the trail, but it wasn't fairly too far off from the trail back. I thought it was a black bear, so I just stood there still. I didn't want to confront anything. It was probably about 15 yards ahead of me, so it wasn't close, but it wasn't far away, if that makes any sense. I couldn't tell how large this thing was. I just saw this black outlining of this dark figure. I was just assuming it was a black bear. That was... Until it stood up and looked directly at me. At this point, my heart started beating out of my chest. When this thing stood up on its back legs, I realized that was no black bear. Yes, it was black in fur. I'm guessing it was about four and a half, maybe five feet tall. But it wasn't a bear. It had pointy ears and red glowing eyes and the snout of some type of dog. If I didn't know better, I would say it was like a werewolf or something, but everybody knows that doesn't exist, right? Locals have told me about the Dogman. I never thought of it to be true. I thought they were just rumors and stories. After a staring contest, and I thought I was going to be destroyed and killed and eaten and God knows what else, the silhouette of this beast disappears back into the woods farther out. It all happened so fast. It happened like in a blink of an eye. And it was gone. It never attacked me. I do believe in the paranormal. 
but I was definitely a skeptic when it came to creatures and cryptids and all that kind of stuff. I just didn't believe in it because there was no evidence of its true nature. There was no bones, there was no DNA, there was just no physical proof. I have that proof now. They are real. I live in Southern Nevada. I've grown up here most of my life. I don't live in Las Vegas, but I do live in one of the surrounding cities. I, for one, am totally sick of living in the desert. It's just ugly. It's just dirt. I want to live somewhere with mountains and trees and woods. Somewhere beautiful. But for now, you just have to accept where you are, I guess. The one good thing about the desert is at night, when it gets cool, and the stars are just... They just look closer than usual, almost like you could put your finger up and touch it. Anyways, me and my buddy Charlie were camping over at the hilltop campgrounds near the Juniper Trailhead. It was just supposed to be an overnight thing, you know, Saturday through Sunday. That's what we usually do because I don't like showering at campgrounds. I'd rather just shower at home. Once we arrived, we emptied out his truck and set everything up in its appropriate place and set up the tent. I cracked open a beer because, hell, it was hot outside. I was telling my buddy about this trail that I wanted to check out. It was called the North Loop Trailhead. It wasn't too far from where we were. And it was uphill and definitely a nice challenge. So, the day was young. We got our waters, got everything we needed for this hike, and we were on our way. I have to say, this hike was actually really awesome. It was not as difficult as I was expecting, but it was still uphill, which sucks. But there were some beautiful sights to see. There was this really old tree, and there was these crazy looking flowers. I mean, there was just some really cool sights there. We really enjoyed the hike. It was on our way back to our camping site when we saw it, though. The beast. As we were walking back down the dirt trail, we saw this really large animal crossing the dirt path. It was pretty far ahead of us, but still, you could see its girth. It was dragging some other animal by its mouth. At first, I thought I was just getting my first glimpse of a mountain lion. But I was terribly mistaken. I want to say we were probably somewhere near a hundred feet of the beast. Maybe a little farther. I can't really tell to be honest. As we got our closer glimpse, we noticed it was no mountain lion. We only had about a few seconds before this beast noticed that it was being watched as it turned its head directly at us and I could see its dead eyes. I swear, it had only turned to look at us for maybe one second, maybe two at the most. Then, it leapt straight up on the side of the mountain nearby it and out of sight, leaving the mangled body of what looked like a fox. I could still remember the way this beast looked. It had the upper body of some kind of bodybuilder when it jumped on the side of the mountain. It jumped the same way as a human, with its arms reaching up towards the rocks almost over its head. It had long, thick, jet black hair, but you could still see the muscular definition. The facial features, from what I could remember, Again, it all happened so fast. It had the features of a large dog with pointy ears. That's about all I could remember. It was truly horrifying. After a few moments after that beast was out of sight, we finally got the courage to run back towards camp. We grabbed most of our stuff that we could leaving the larger items behind, and we raced the hell out of there. 
needless to say, we never went back there to go camping ever again. My name is Andy, and I'm from Great Falls, Montana. This story happened last year. You may not think it's that crazy or even believe me at all, but it is 100% true. My family and I were going on a weekend getaway at the Dick's RV Park. We own one of those small RVs attached to the back of my truck, and that's where we go to go camping. It's kind of been a tradition for a couple different generations of mine, at least on my side of the family. This RV park is pretty neat. It's right there off of 11th Street. So, it's Friday afternoon. We arrived, got to our spot, and everything was set up outside. I started grilling some hamburgers on our charcoal grill that I'd brought. My son was sitting at the picnic table playing on his iPad thingy, and my wife, she was preparing all the vegetables and the side dishes to go along with the burgers for lunch. It was a beautiful day out with just scattered clouds up in the sky. It had a slight breeze that day. The temperature was in the low 80s, maybe the upper 70s. After lunch, fast forward a couple of hours, I invited my family to go fishing with me along the river. They declined, of course. So I just went by myself. It wasn't the first time I have. Anyways, to keep a long story short, I was sitting at the edge of the water. I had my line in, and I was just relaxing. In my distance to the right, you could see that old metal railroad bridge that went across the river. I was just sitting there, sipping on my beer, just enjoying the afternoon. That was, until I saw that thing. This black looking dog beast was across the water. I swear it just popped out of nowhere, right at the edge of the waterline across from me. Its eyes were reflecting or glowing, I couldn't tell. This thing looked like a large dog, but it stood like Hell, it stood like me. It was at least four and a half, maybe five feet tall. I don't know any other way to explain it. But as soon as it caught wind that I was looking at it, it disappeared in the woods. Literally, within a snap of a finger, it was gone. It shocked me so much. My line bit, and I lost the grip of the whole pole and it went flying in the water. I didn't even bother going after it. The fish could have it. I stumbled back to my feet and ran back to my family. I explained everything to them. Of course, they didn't really believe me, but when they saw how frightened I truly was, they kind of started to believe me. They may have not believed what I had seen, but they definitely started to believe that I did in fact see something that scared the living crap out of me. We enjoyed the rest of our time that we were there, without any incident or occurrence or any other visual encounters of this thing, but I refused to go back there to go camping ever again. I live in a small town called Sydney in the state of Maine. My family and I were camping at the Green Valley Park over in Vassalboro last year. What I saw still haunts my dreams. We were there for two nights. The first night was excellent, as it usually is. That's kind of our go-to place to go, as it's not terribly too far from home. On our last night there, though, that's when I swore I saw something. We were all sitting around the fire that evening, having some beers after a long barbecue feast. As somebody was telling a ghost story, hell, I don't even remember who it was at the time. 
But that's when I saw this large, dark, hairy thing out in the distance in the wood lines. It was pretty far out, but it was close enough to see the figurine of this man-beast. This thing looked like it was built like some kind of bodybuilder, but it had the snout of a dog, pointy ears, and red glowing eyes. If it wasn't for the ears, I may have mistaken it for a Sasquatch, better known as a Bigfoot. It was kind of far off, but you could definitely tell that the posture was similar. But those eyes... God, those eyes were horrifying. This thing was just hunched over, just watching us. Like it was examining its next meal or something. It didn't make a sound. It just stood there and watched. At first I was stunned, and I was trying to squint my eyes to get a better adjustment. It was already dark out. It was just standing there. I could tell by the way its chest was moving that it was breathing really heavy. I tried to get everybody's attention. It took a few tries, but eventually everybody turned around, but... But by that time, the thing must have caught wind that I had seen it because I was making crazy emotions and raising my voice at everyone, trying to get their attention to look behind them. The thing was gone. Nobody else saw it but me. And to this day, nobody believes me either. Last summer, I was camping with my best friend Brandon over at the Monocle Lake Campground in Michigan. It's almost at the very north tip of the state. We're both from a small town called Brimley, where there's roughly about maybe 1,200 people. It's really small. We're both avid fishermen, so that's what we do in the summertime, or at least on the weekends when we're both not working. We just bring our gear out there in his truck, and we camp out for the weekend, and we fish. Just the two of us. We've been doing it for about six months now. My buddy Brandon is actually half native. Half his family is from the Bay Mills Indian community. It was always quite interesting to hear the stories and the myths and legends of different cryptid creatures that his grandparents would talk to us about. Of course, we just always thought it was to keep us in line and to obey, but no, that wasn't the case at all. The last night that we were at that campground was the last time I ever went to that place. I refused to go back there. We were already up there for a couple of days. We were trying to make three days out of it, and so far, two out of three were perfect as usual. But on that last night, though, that's when it hit the fan. We had already went fishing. We already had our grub. We were just sitting around the campfire telling jokes and drinking beer. We started hearing things in the wood around us. Snapping noises. Like something was circling around us. We heard it from our left, then from behind, then to our right, and then back again. Something was definitely watching us. At first, I thought somebody was just messing with us. After the first few minutes, I shouted out to whoever or whatever it was. Hey! Stop messing around! Come out! What the hell's wrong with you guys? The noises stopped, yet I got no reply. My heart started beating so hard, it felt like it was going to break through my ribcage and sternum. The longer the silence was, the more terrified I became, and I suddenly got a chill go down the back of my spine. I was gripping the arms of my lawn chair so hard my fingers started to turn white. I looked over at Brandon and he was as white as a ghost. Did he see something? Brandon! What's going on? 
why are you why are you looking like that? You look like you just saw a ghost. He slowly turned his head at me, not blinking once. And then he spoke softly. I... I saw it. I saw it. I saw the eyes. You saw what? Yo, you're not making any sense. Talk to me. What the hell did you see? He just had this dead stare at me. He was not in his right mind. There's something wrong with him. I thought to myself. Dogman. Dogman. He kept repeating it over and over and over. And every time he did, he got louder and louder. Finally, he snapped out of whatever the hell he was, some kind of trance, that's the best I could describe it at least, and he motioned that we need to get the hell out of there, like, now. We gathered our things, and we jetted out of there as quickly as possible. He explained to me everything I needed to know about the dogman, and what he had seen that night. Again, I just remember his grandparents telling us stories, but... This brought a lot of closure to my curiosity that I don't want to open up Pandora's box to find out more. We never went back there to go camping or fishing ever since. This happened in upstate New York. I live in a small town called Plattsburgh which is right there by the Cumberland Bay, at the border of Canada. My buddy and I were just relaxing and doing a little fishing. We were just a little north of the Kent de Lord House Museum. It was a Sunday evening. The weather was beautiful, and we could see the sunset in the horizon. It was gorgeous how it reflected off the water. Our boat was docked just a little south of the Cumberland Bay State Park. Our fishing lines were... dead. We haven't caught anything in hours. It was already starting to get dark, so we were going to call it a night and bring the boat back into the docks. Before we turned his boat on and headed back, we heard this howling coming from somewhere on shore. Then, we heard a scream. We both looked over to the state park area where the beach is at, where people like to lounge and relax. And that's when we saw something dart off into the woods. There was a woman there running for her life in the opposite direction by the sand. We screamed at the woman to see if she needed help. She must have heard us. We weren't terribly too far off from shore. My buddy turned on his boat and we steered in closer to the shore. Once we got close enough, I hopped out into the water and ran to her. She was in sh total shock and frantic panic. She was twitching and waving her arms around and trying to fight me off and I was just there to try to help her. My friend anchored out and he hopped in the water too. We tried to calm her down but it took several minutes. Her upper left arm near her shoulder was slashed. There was blood all over her clothes and arm. Once she finally calmed down, she explained to us that she was just walking her little dog around the edge of the water. And something came out of the wood lines nearby, snatched her dog, and slashed at her and darted back off into the woods. She said she didn't get the best look at it. It happened so quickly. It looked like a dark man with the face of a dog. She said he was as black as the night. She also stated that this thing was close to the same height as her. Around five foot, maybe five foot five. And extremely quick. 
We called the police with our cell phones, and luckily they showed up in about 15 minutes. They took her statement, and then they wanted to talk to us aside from her. I explained that we were out there fishing, and we did hear some howling noise, and we did see something run off in the woods. I was honest, I couldn't give a good description. It was a dark figure, but I couldn't tell if it was a man, woman, teenager, or some beast that she's claiming to see. It was really too far off, to be honest, and it was already dark. But there's no denying those slash marks on her shoulder. She encountered the beast. This story I haven't spoken about in probably five years. This happened when I was in my early teens. I think I was 13 or 14 at the time. I grew up in a small town called Colville in Washington. My family and I were having a weekend camping getaway at a nearby campground called Flodell. When we first arrived, it was perfect. The sun was out, it was partly cloudy, and the temperature was probably in the mid-70s at most. I helped my dad put the tent together, snacked on beef jerky for about half the day, while my mom prepped for an early lunch. I remember going hiking with my parents. They both loved the hike, even though neither one of them were in good shape, but they still somehow found the energy to go on long-ass hikes and always wanted to have me tag along when I would rather just kick back by the picnic table and read a book. So, we were all on one of those hiking trails. There's so many different paths to take, I don't even remember which one it was, even though they all kind of had their own name on the wooden signs going different directions. Another awesome thing about this park is that there's a bunch of little rivers and little outskirts of water runways all over the place. It's absolutely awesome. I love these campgrounds. Let me rephrase that. I used to. While we were hiking, we came across the occasional rodents like squirrels and chipmunks. We even came across the Oregon Jay and the Goldfinch. I don't remember how long we actually hiked. It must have been for at least two plus hours because I was getting irritated and I wanted to get back to camp. Eventually, they looped around and we started heading back to camp. The sun was starting to set, but it was still daylight from what I could remember. I just know that everything started to become pretty quiet around us. The birds stopped chirping and we couldn't hear anything but our own footsteps. We just kept walking, but on guard at this point. Something this didn't feel right. Even I was feeling funky. I remember my mom whispering a lot. I think she was trying to keep my mind off things and try to keep me calm, and in the same sense, reverse psychology for herself. I think we were starting to get closer back to our spot when my dad put his arm out and stopped us right in our tracks on the dirt path. He put his finger against his lips as he turned his head towards us, motioning us to keep quiet. Shh. I kept quiet as I gripped my mom's arm and stood by her side. My dad was staring at something to his left. I was on the other side of my mom, to his right. I didn't see it at first. I leaned forward and turned my head to see if I could see whatever he was seeing. And there it was. This black figure somewhere off in the woods. It was pretty far away, but you could definitely see something was there. My dad whispered to us, It's gotta be a black bear. Maybe a grizzly, but they're pretty rare out here. Then he shook his head. No. It's not a bear. He grabbed his binoculars from his pouch on his waist and held them against his face. 
He stumbled backwards, I'm assuming in fright. He was a loss for words. He pushed the binoculars to my mom and said, Look, what the hell is it? My mom was puzzled at first, until she looked through the binoculars in the direction where my dad was pointing to. Then she said, and I will never forget these words, Honey, that's just some big dog. But why is he standing like that? He's... It looks like he's looking right at us. She put the binoculars down and turned to my father. What do we do? My dad stood in silence for a moment. I remember him shaking his head and looking at us. We could try to run back to camp, but if this thing truly is some large dog thing, he's going to be a hell of a lot faster than we are. So, we just sit here and wait then? She implied. He grabbed the binoculars back and put them against his face once again. He took a deep breath. <gasps> it's gone. Look on, it's gone. That thing disappeared. My dad was looking from left, then to his right, scoping out the area. The thing was gone. We walked back to camp as quietly and as cautiously as possible. We never did see that beast again, nor did we stay the night to even give it another chance to. Needless to say, we never camped at those campgrounds ever since. I'm born and raised in northeastern Montana at the Fort Peck Indian Reservation area. I am a descendant of the Western Dakota tribe. My buddies and I were just gathered around the fire as we usually do on the weekends, sipping beer and eating some grub. We had to milk it in as much as we could because winter was coming when this had happened. It was fall, and it was starting to get extremely cold outside. So, we wanted to take advantage of it while we had it before the snowfall came. I know it was before midnight when it had happened. I'm going off a of memory here, so bear with me. It was pitch black out. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. The stars looked like diamonds in the sky. It was a great night. I know we ate good, we definitely drank good, and we were just telling jokes and talking about God knows what we were talking about. I know that part of my family lives over in North Dakota, and some of my family lives in Montana. I think we were talking about some upcoming road trip or something, to be honest. I don't remember every single little detail. This happened more than a year ago. But what I saw is this clearest day to this day. I broke away from the fire pit and my friends to take a leak. I walked down the dirt trail to some upcoming trees. As I walked through the tree line, I handled my business. When I was finishing up, that's when I heard the snapping of some twigs out in front of me somewhere. I looked straight out, looking from left and right, trying to see what was out there. I thought it might just be a, a rodent of some sort, but no. I saw these red glowing eyes looking directly back at me, like it was the devil himself. I heard the growl of whatever this beast was. It was so dark out, I couldn't even see the true silhouette of this being. It was a good thing that this had happened after I'd finished using the restroom or else I would have surely pissed myself. I was just standing there, frozen in shock, trying to see the silhouette of whatever this was staring back at me in the woods. Whatever it was was definitely close to my height and I'm almost six feet tall. And by the grace of the gods, a couple of my friends and their dog on a leash was walking in my direction 
I think they were just checking up on me because I was taking too long to return to the fire pit. Thank God they did. Because their dogs spooked whatever that was staring back at me in the woods. When I turned back around after looking at my friends, it was gone. I didn't even have a chance to scream out for help. It had totally disappeared. I was still utterly and completely terrified about this event. They could see it in my face. I couldn't explain myself until I got back to the fire. I explained everything to my friends. They believed me, surprisingly. They told me it must have been the dog man. I'll never venture off to take a piss like that ever again. My family and I were a cross-country camping expedition adventure, mind you. Our cross-country camping adventure started in Northern California where we're from. We made our first stop in Washington, spent a couple days there. Then we ventured off further east in the Northern States into a small town called Rexford, Montana. We ended up camping at the Rexford Beat Campground near the lake. It was absolutely stunning out there. You're surrounded by ginormous mountains and beautiful woods all around you. Plus you got a lake right there. What more could you ask for? This was God's country. I was joking with my wife. I said, if I didn't have to go back to work, and I was like self-employed or rich or something, uh, we would just move here and just buy some large cabin and just retire. It's perfect out here. But I've heard about their winters out here. I've heard the horror stories of the unbearable cold and snow. I like the snow, but not that much. We didn't have any floating devices. So maybe outside of a casual swim, we wouldn't really be spending too much time around the lake. Instead, we set up camp and started putting some meat on the grill. I remember having a conversation around the fire with my wife about possibly selling our house in California and moving to Montana. It's really that gorgeous here. I know the winters are crazy, but wow, the rest of the year is just breathtaking. And if you're sick of the big cities and dealing with crazy amounts of traffic, I mean, there's literally like a million people in the whole state. It's awesome out here. Don't quote me on the whole numbers thing. I know I'm close, but statistics change every year. I'm just saying that it's pretty unoccupied for the most part. That evening was pretty spectacular, honestly. Nothing abnormal. I just said hi to our fellow camping neighbors and finished our dinner and we were just telling some spooky tales around the fire. It started to become annoying, then it started to alert me just a little bit as our neighbor's dog kept freaking out like the last half hour before it happened. The dog was obviously trying to warn us of something. It kept barking and growling. It was facing our direction like... It was barking at us, and the neighbors kept apologizing to us, saying that their dog normally doesn't act like that. I told them it's no big deal, maybe he just smells our food or something, but no, that wasn't it at all. As we were just annoyed by the neighbor's dog, we started noticing that we were hearing these Noises coming from behind us on the opposite end of our camping spot. Then, we started to hear a slight growl. I was frozen in shock. I was too afraid to even look behind me. My wife was just holding onto my arm and my son happened to already be asleep inside the tent. I don't know what time it was now looking back, but it was pretty late. 
but I turned around slightly, and so did my wife. Out in the distance, I don't know how far it was, somewhere in the woods, we saw this large, darkish figure. It was very large. My first thought was, maybe it was a black bear, or even a grizzly. Black bears are more common, but grizzlies are like double the size. They're enormous. As we sat there in shock, I let my eyes focus in just a little bit sharper. And that's when I realized that thing was no bear. At first, it was hunched over on all fours, which is why I was thinking it was some kind of bear at first. But as I continued to stare at it, this beast hopped on its back two legs again, like bears do. But this thing looked completely different once you really got a good look at it. For one, the ears were completely wrong. The ears were pointed like a canine, and the snout the same. It just didn't symbol a bear. It symboled more of a human with a larger upper torso more than a bear or any other animal, but its head was more canine-like. Almost like something that you would see in a movie. We both just sat there puzzled, wondering what its next move would be. Was it going to come closer? Or was it going to go away? Maybe it was just curious. I looked at my wife, and I asked her, What should we do? She couldn't respond. When I turned my head back towards this thing in the woods, it was gone. It had completely disappeared without any noise at all. It had completely vanished. I know I had some extra coffee that night. I didn't sleep for the remainder of the evening. After a while, I told my wife to go ahead and just get some sleep and I would stay awake through the night and keep watch. There was just no way I was going to wake up my son and try to pack everything up in the middle of the night and leave. No. This thing was kind of far off and it disappeared anyway, so I was concerned, but I didn't feel as threatened as I would have been if it was a little bit closer. Nothing happened the remainder of the night. We packed up and left, and we never again returned to Montana. This happened last spring. I'm born and bred in Butte, Montana, which is in the Jefferson County area. My family and I were going on a weekend expedition camping, which involves a heck of a lot of hiking, grilling, and sleeping in. Our favorite place to go was the Freedom Point Campground, which is just northwest on the Highway 15. We were planning just to make a full day out of it, just an overnight sleepover and then return home the following morning. Since we live in the area, there's no point for staying more than overnight. At least that's what we do, at least. I like the shower at my own house, thank you. It was a beautiful, bright, sunny afternoon. We had packed lunches from home, so we were just snacking at those at the picnic area. Once we wrapped up lunch, we got our gear from the car for hiking and picked a trail, and we began our voyage. I'd say the first hour was completely normal. The temperature was right, not a cloud in the sky. There was a slight breeze that seemed to be heading west that gave a great chill against my skin. To our left was the mountainside. Straight ahead, and also to our right, was deep forest. We ventured in farther than I really wanted to because I wanted to get back and get the tent all set up before sunset. It was just so nice out. We just kept talking and kept going. We definitely lost track of time. 
we eventually made a U-turn and started heading back towards the camp direction. Fast forward probably another 40 minutes or so. We're starting to get close to where we had parked. We started hearing these noises around us, echoing surrounding our location where we were walking. It was hard to pinpoint where these noises were coming from, but it definitely sounded like we were being followed. At first, it was just a branch snapping here, a twig snipping there. Then we started hearing footsteps, more like feeling them, like something that was incredibly large that was nearby. We started walking a little bit faster. I started to become a little paranoid. In the back of my head, I just thought maybe it was some elk or a deer. But again, we didn't really know for certain. All I know is that we were not alone on that trail. Then the howls came. Was there more than one? Or was it just one wolf nearby? Or a coyote? I don't know. That's when I started to get a frightening tingle down the back of my spine. Regardless, if it was a wolf or a coyote or whatever the hell it might be, they're dangerous animals. We need to get back to the car, ASAP, I told my family. Just continue walking at a fast pace along the trail. We can't be too far off. As we continued our walk, I looked back a few times, just to check to make sure that nothing was following us. And of course, every time I looked, there was nothing there. But still, occasionally, we would hear the snapping of something behind us. Was something toying with us? Were we out of bounds on something's territory? Or was I just paranoid? No. Because it's affecting my wife and kid too. It can't just be me. It just felt like the longer we walked, the more I felt like whatever it was was getting closer to us. My son started to slow down his pace, and he came over to me and started asking me questions. What's these noises? Why are we walking faster? Why are you sweating so much? And so on. I tried to explain to my son why these things were happening, but honestly, I didn't even know myself, to be quite honest. I told him that there are wild animals in the woods, not all of them are friendly, and there are some animals that have yet to be discovered scientifically, so it's best to leave that to the scientists. My son thought this was some kind of a game. It was the farthest thing from it. He just started mocking me. Hmm, are you scared? Are you gonna get mad? Are you gonna cry? Are you gonna cry, Dad? Are you going to get mad? He just kept repeating himself over and over and over. It started to drive me insane. I told him to be quiet and to continue walking. This is no joking matter. We're being followed. Once I said that, he shut up really quick. I think the realization that I wasn't playing around with him finally sinked into his little brain. 
during this whole expedition, my wife was completely silent. I asked her if she was okay and she just shook her head. No, I'm not okay. How could I be okay knowing that there's some freak show behind us somewhere? Again, not knowing was scary enough. But when I looked behind me, that last and final time, that answered the question that we all had. When I had casually turned around, that's when I saw these red glowing eyes and this dark silhouette of some dog-like humanoid figure. It was probably about 10 meters or so behind us, casually just following us at a slow, steady pace. It tried hiding itself, camouflaging its dark fur behind some brush and trees, but I got a glimpse at it. It was horrifying. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I told my family to book it, and we all ran as quickly as possible down the dirt trail back to our car in the parking lot. We got inside and raced out of there as quickly as possible. Needless to say, we never went back to that campground again. Well, I hope that everybody enjoyed the 33 killer Dogman encounter stories tonight. I appreciate everybody for stopping by, and I really appreciate it if you actually stayed through the whole three hours with us. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share me with your friends, and spread me like butter. Have a good night.